the What to Next podcast helps you build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they loved for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next free read, then the show's right. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to What to Next podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. So, so happy to have you here. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so my name is Sarah Grunder Ruiz, and I am the author of two and a half books, <laughs> Love, Lists, and Fancy Ships, which came out in November, and Luck and Last Resorts, which comes out August 9th. And then I'm almost done with my third book, Last Call at the Local, which comes out next summer. But when I'm not a writer, I am a professor at a university where I teach first year writing. So academic writing, English 101, everyone's favorite class, sarcasm. Um, But I actually really love teaching. So it's pretty good balance. I have two kids and two dogs and I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. I think that's, that's all the most important things. Oh my gosh. I used to work at a college. I didn't used to teach the freshman one-on-one the the first class the one that you're like I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing yeah you know, like this random one credit that they make you do it so you can transition and it's like it has the best of both worlds because you're working with freshmen who have like no idea what's going on and then you're like you're shaving their minds but same time you're like they keep you young <laughs> I love them and um you know, some millennials like to hate on Gen Z. I love Gen Z. I have been waiting for this generation my whole life and yeah. we have a lot of fun together. <laughs> yeah. I used to, I left when I, there were still millennials when I left. So, so tell me about the Gen Zers. Like what are some of the trends that you've noticed that they keep you young, you know, while you're teaching them? <laughs> Gee, uh, they are just so socially conscious, which is, yeah. I learn a lot from them. Um, they're very passionate. They want to pursue, you know, things that matter to them. Mm-hmm. Um, I love their fashion, like really the, the Gen Z fashion, I'm all about it. You can't tell right now. Cause I'm wearing a giant, I'm wearing my pajamas and a giant sweater. Um, but they are just so fun to be around. I don't know if it's just because they are college students and I am a child at heart, or if it's, their specific generation, but I don't know. I just have a great time with them. It's so good. Yeah. I asked my Gen Zer little sister. She was born the year that I graduated. That tells you <laughs> our age gap. I asked her what was Y2K okay? and her response was fashion. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> That's good. You know what? Here's the thing I will say that is very Gen Z is they have very dark humor. Yeah. So, so they don't, they, they like won't laugh at my jokes but if it's a self-deprecating joke yeah. it's like I think once in class I said something like I don't know if I've just become a pessimist or if it's my depression and they laughed I was like that's <laughs> that's what thanks guys thanks for laughing at that um yeah. I would say that is a very Gen Z trait I don't know if your sister's like that I think so I we're still getting to know each other so yeah um, but yeah I was just like know about that <laughs> you know <laughs> but it is it is it is eye, it is eye opening so um so let's talk about your writing so what was the source of inspiration because these books are they're they're related to a show that we can mention um but they're what was the source like you had you had a story because of you know not just related to yes the yeah so initially so Luck and Last Resorts is the sequel companion novel. You don't have to read the first book, Loveless and Fancy Ships. I recommend that you do, obviously. Um, But initially there was no yachting at all. There was no yachting. I didn't even know. Joe from the first book was going to be a teacher because that's all I know how to do. Yeah. Um, But my sister was a yacht stewardess. Um, So that's, that's how that part came about when I had a friend who was like, you know what, it would be great to give a character the job your sister has. And I was like, yes, it would. And then my sister told me about Below Deck and said, yeah, it's pretty accurate. So I watched a lot of Below Deck. But, you know, the heart of the story for Loveless and Fancy Ships. um, So in that novel, the main character, her 11 year old nephew has passed away. Mm -hmm. When I was very young, one of my cousins passed away when he was 12. And that summer after he died, um, my sibling, not mine, his siblings all came down to Florida to stay with my family Mm -hmm. for the summer. And my mom is the fun aunt. So Mm -hmm. 
everyone loves to come down for the summer and we they would go to the beach, all the things that like you would read and love less and fancy ships. And I just always remember her describing that summer as like being this strange mixture of the typical fun you would have Mm -hmm. family fun in the sun um, with this like grief that would bubble up. And that was the real seed of loveless and fancy ships. So for luck and last resorts, um, Nina just came in my mind, like fully formed. I don't remember anything about creating her. I also have a poor memory in general, but um, she and Ollie, I, when I wrote Love, listen, fancy ships. I had no idea what their deal was. I didn't know um, what their past was, what they were so mad at each other about. Um, so when I was in between drafts of Love, listen, fancy ships, like it, I would think I was just about to sell the book. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was thinking of an idea for Nina just because everyone loved Nina so much. She was everyone's favorite character. People love her a little bit less in Luck and Last Resorts, but that's okay. Um, But I was like, I wonder what their deal is. And that's how I came up with the story. But I can't really say what their backstory is because it's my favorite surprise of the whole book. It is such a good surprise because I remember (laughs) reading it and being like, okay, okay, I get the story. You know, like I'm liking this, like, uh, you know, this chap and this chief stewardess together. And then, and then I get, and then, Chapter I, get, four. And then I get to that point and I was like, oh my gosh, it's even better. <laughs> you so, have a trope that I love. So for those who are like, I love this trope. Yes, so, me too. So much. But I love that it was kept as a secret. Like it's not I, spoil. For a while, I thought we were going to have that on the retail copy. So I didn't know if it was going to be a secret. I'm so glad that it was because I, readers, so on Instagram, I mostly live there. Readers will send me DMs after they finish chapter four. So I've made it like, I've like hyped up chapter four. I have a whole highlight that is just people's reactions to the end of chapter four. And I thought it was obvious, honestly. I was like, everyone's gonna be like, Sarah, what a horrible, like, that wasn't very surprising. But really only one person I've talked to was like, I knew it. Um, And I was like, really? I guess I did a good job putting some red herrings. I don't know. I don't remember. I did not not know that it was going to happen. And I was like living for it. I'm so glad. Like I was telling my friends, I was like, you need to read this. Because I know this trope. And I know I'm like, you need to read this trope. It's hard when I see people like make requests for books with that trope. And I'm like, but I can't say anything. No, but that's the whole point. And I'm like, so I saw someone... I, I someone was watching Bill Jack yesterday on the stories and I was and she was like I wish there was a chief stewardess and a chef and I was like oh, I'm sorry but the book is coming on two weeks so don't worry yes about it. <laughs> just oh, <for> the book. <laughs> I'm so excited I mean I hope people read it I all I want is for people to read the story because I love it so much yeah I'm like if you want Ben and Cade you know they were my inspiration for (laughs) Nina and Ollie honestly I was like I want them to have a Ben and Kate dynamic and Ollie originally was British and my husband Marco was like he's too close to Ben and like Gordon Ramsay and I was watching Downton Abbey at the time and I'm in love with Alan Leach who plays Tom and I was like he's Irish (laughs) and that has like changed my whole career because book three is about Ollie's younger brother Jack and it takes place in Ireland and I was like people are gonna think I have this thing for like Irish guys and like Ireland and now I do because I went there for research for that book um but it's just like it wasn't intentional, but that, that's where we are. That's where we are. It's just, you. what you, what happened was you follow the breadcrumbs. You were like, okay, here's an idea. Spin around, do the author magic. Yep. Comes to this idea. And then you're like, spin around again and do the author magic. And it comes to another idea. And it's just like, it takes you to, you know, to your own magic place. Well, and Jack was such a surprise to me because he, you know, he's only on like yeah. two pages. Yeah. And as, he was never supposed to be important. He was never supposed to have a book. He was never, I already had an idea. And as soon as, literally, as soon as I wrote that scene, I was like, what is this guy's deal? He's so fun. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, I want to write a book about him, but I have this other idea about like a karaoke singer or something. And I was telling my beta reader 
Beta Reader Danny, who if people follow me on Instagram, you know who Beta Reader Danny is because I share her comments about my drafts. Um, she was like, why don't you combine the ideas? And my third book just came fully formed like into my mind. So I, I'm excited for people to meet Jack because there may or may not be appearances of Ollie and Nina and other characters in that book too. <laughs> I love this. Oh, it's so exciting. Now we just have to wait another year. So I have to finish it. <laughs> we don't want to talk about that. We're, we're not going to talk about that. No. We're just too, it's going to like, it's going to come fully formed and you just like, it's going to be marketed and all they're ready to go. You just have to show <laughs> up and like, we're like, there you go. Oh, if only. <laughs> no, but I like the hard part of the writing. I think it's fun. Oh, God. So, in between that, after we read Luck and Last Resorts, um, what kind of books do you tend to gravitate and what kind of books do you recommend our listeners to pick up? So I mostly read romance. And I will say I have been, and I think a lot of people have too, this year I've been in such a reading slump. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've read wonderful books. And there are so, every book I've read has been wonderful. I think that my brain is just like garbage. (laughs) Uh, And when I'm actively drafting, I listen to whatever I'm writing at night. Whatever I've written, I listen to it at night. And that's usually when I read. So there are periods where I don't read as much as I would like to. Um, But I read a lot of romance and I read a lot of nonfiction because there's something about nonfiction. It's just like stimulates my brain with information. They're usually shorter, put on an audio book if I have to like do laundry. Um, but I will say that there, some of the books that I have really loved lately, and I'm sorry to everyone that I mostly read arcs. So most of these books are not out, but the, most of them will be out soon. And one book that I read over the holidays was Sarah Hogel's next book, mm-hmm. Just Like Magic, which is the most, I, I was texting Sarah and I was just like, I can't believe you got Penguin Random House to publish this book. It is that ridiculous off the wall. Like, and it was perfect. It was amazing. I am trying to decide if that's my favorite Sarah Hogle book. And I don't know. I think I just love them all. Um, And that comes out in October. So pre-order it, everyone. The next book that I really enjoyed is Harlem Sunset. This is actually a mystery Mm -hmm. by Nikessa Afia. And this is the second book in her series. The first one is Dead Dead Girls. It came out last year. So mm-hmm. you everyone should buy both. Um, and the main character of this book, her name is Lou. And Nikessa describes her as a tiny, tired lesbian. Mm-hmm. And she solves crimes in, you know, Harlem in the 20s. Um, and Yes, there is a there is a character in Luck and Last Resorts named Nikessa, and she is named after Nikessa Afia. So that was my my tribute to Nikessa. There's a little fun fact. Uh, oh, a book that just like utterly consumed my life and gave me so many feels is The Lost Ticket by Freya Sampson, which comes out at the end of August. So mm-hmm. just just do yourself a favor and buy that book. I, it had me up until three in the morning. I was in like Freya's DMs, just like blowing it up, like screaming with my thumbs. <laughs> and she probably woke up and she's in London. So she probably actually saw it fairly early. But it, that book just, it was so heartwarming and the romance was excellent. And oh, I, we have the same editor too. So I like had to email my editor like oh my god this book was amazing um so yeah definitely buy that one and then of course uh chloe lease has her first traditionally published book coming out two wrongs make a right that comes out in november it has these wonderful neurodivergent protagonists and it's a take on 12th night i'm pretty sure um which i have never read so so i don't know how that how that goes because i am uneducated obviously but It was a wonderful book that I had the pleasure of reading recently. Um, But other than that, I've been doing a lot of nonfiction reading um, for research for my third book. Uh, And that has been a lot of fun, too. That sounds good. Honestly, you gave me some good recommendations of books that I'm looking forward to reading. So (laughs) There's just too many good books that I don't know where to start. Um, 
it's it's like a lot there are i'm like I, part of me is like am i ready to write to read christmas and then it's like you know maybe this is what i need to do because i've been a rain is love you know christmas in july it is july yeah. It is July. Yeah. My son is actually in a ca- camp right now that's called Christmas in July. It was just the last one available. I was like, sign him up, please. <laughs> he likes it. So, oh my God. I love this idea. Christmas in July. It's so awesome. So, tell us where you can find you online. Um, you can mostly find me on Instagram. I pretty much live there. I just narrate my life and my stories. And my handle is my name, Sarah Grunder Ruiz. Um, pretty much everywhere else. If it's not Sarah Grunder Ruiz, you can find me as a Grunder cat <laughs> that is on TikTok and Twitter. Uh, I've been posting a series on my TikTok uh, that is about how to get a book deal. So if that is something that interests folks, you know, you should go on my TikTok and check it out. It's like 10, it's like 12 videos that are each three minutes long, just talking through the whole process. Um, and my website is Sarah Ruiz Writes. And you can sign up for my sub stack there. I send my newsletter whenever I feel like it. <laughs> um, and I also have a podcast that I do now very sporadically. Um, that's all about the sucky parts of writing. It's called That's the Butts Live. I've had some wonderful guests, including Sarah Hogel, Lisa K. Adams was just on it. Um, my beta readers were on it and that was really fun. And you can find information on that on my Substack too, but it's also on Apple Podcasts. So I know there's a lot of scattered places, but the, like the, the central hub is my Instagram account. <laughs> okay. I love this. Thank you, Sarah, for being in the show. Thank you. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For a list of books mentioned and other romance recommendations, please visit watchrenextblog.com. Did you know you can purchase audiobooks directly from your favorite local bookstore? With Librafem, you can pick up more than 250,000 audiobooks, including bestsellers and recommendations from real booksellers. You'll get the same audiobooks at the same price as the largest audiobook company, you know the name, but you'll be part of a different story, one that supports the local community. If you're new to audiobooks, they're the perfect way to squeeze more reading into your busy life. Listen with the free Libra FM app while you do your chores, walk the dog, relax at home. If you already love audiobooks and don't know what to listen next, check out recommendations from people who know the best booksellers. The Watch Your Next podcast has a special offer for our listeners. Get to audiobooks on Libra FM for the price of one with your first month membership. Use code Watch Your Next. The offer is valid only for new members in Canada and the U.S. The Watch Your Next podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Please visit frolic.media slash podcast to discover new shows to tune in. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.